with a patient. I had a patient whom I had treated for a number of years for a recurrent depression. She came into the hospital in what we call a manic state. That is, she was very, very speeded up, euphoric, on top of the world. I'd never seen her manic before, never looked upon her as bipolar. And within a day or two of her admission to the hospital, she had a sudden grand mal seizure, epileptic-like seizure. This is in a woman who had no history of seizure disorder. I really could not explain either the sudden onset of mania in somebody who'd been on antidepressants for years, usually in a bipolar patient, that is, in a manic depressive patient. An antidepressant will trigger a manic episode. She'd been on, ma on uh, antidepressants for a long time, no manic episode. Suddenly was manic and then had a grand mal seizure. Clinically, I could not explain that. So we essentially did some detective work looking at what was different in this woman's life. And the only thing we could find was that she had made a decision to lose some weight. So she switched from iced tea sweetened with sugar to uh, iced tea sweetened with aspartame. And she was drinking fairly large amounts of it. Now, you could, you could speculate that perhaps the caffeine in the tea may have been a factor, but she had not changed the total quantity. She'd had this amount of iced tea for many years without manic episodes, without grand mal seizures. What was different was the aspartame. So I started looking at that, and it made sense that aspartame would lower the seizure threshold. That is, what we knew about the chemistry of aspartame at that point in time did point to the possibility that aspartame could, one, trigger a manic episode, and two, could lower the seizure threshold sufficiently for her to have a grand mal seizure. And that was the beginning. Then I found other patients like that. I wrote about it. And that was in uh, 1985, really two years or so after the introduction of aspartame into the market.